there is a sense of demographic panic that's taking place as yeah. the younger generations are more and more non-white. And let's just be frank, illegal, illegal immigration, quote unquote, unlawful migration is a symbol for demographic panic. And that is what Donald yeah. Trump is stoking. Well, I make that same mistake myself tonight, looking at the American flags and saying the Americans, what a terrible mistake. I apologize for that to everybody. I mean it. Uh, but it but, isn't. As I told you, they have mandarins I, in the audience. They have Hispanics okay, in the audience. I didn't see all what those mandarins. I saw. Exactly you Asian Americans. It's the opposite You're of demographic panic. It has it's nothing to do It's called Asian Americans, Anne. Asian Americans, not mandarins. It has nothing to do with 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 demographics. It's but your throwback language. With, it's not 1913. They're called Asian Americans, anyway, not Mandarins. I was saying it has nothing to do with demographics. It has to do with whether you are here legally or illegally, whether you consider yourself an American, whether the laws on the books are going to be enforced. We are having an invasion of but people if you discuss, across if, the okay. southern if you're, border. If your default, you okay, in if your right default in uh, discussing uh, Asian Americans is to call people Mandarins, we're, in, uh, anyway. we're not bringing back. Arcane saying. language here, Anne. Let's just okay. talk about people as Americans, Asian Americans. That's the term. No, you're not going to police my language. Right they now. are Mandarin. I think the points of view it is clear. written in Mandarin. Uh, I think somebody just said no, I agree with, which is if you consider yourself a Mar book in Trump, we trust. There it is. And Coulter points out Trump's success is due to the fact that, quote, he's beholden to no one except the millions of ordinary Americans showing up at his speeches, following him on Twitter. But since winning the nomination, Trump's trailed Hillary Clinton in the polls. A real clear politics average has Clinton behind, or ahead rather, by a little over five points right now. So with 77 days to go to Election Day, how does Trump turn it around? From where I'm joined by conservative columnist and author of In Trump We Trust, Ann Coulter. So, Ann, the reason I find you uh, interesting as a guest at this point, besides your usual provocative <laughs> manner, is maybe you have a sense of how they got to get this, his ship right again. This guy was running on three great cases. One is people don't like illegal immigration, okay? Number two, they don't like our jobs going to Mexico right. and, and, uh, and to China. They don't like our hollowing out of our big cities, especially with the poor people who live in those big cities in many cases. And they damn as hell don't like these stupid wars. On all three points, Trump was hitting them. Yes. But lately, he keeps getting distracted in these sideline arguments. Now, you can blame the media all you want, but if he's a pro, He's got to be able to direct the conversation. Can he get back to the winning arguments and maybe give Hillary a run for her money at the end? I think so, and I think what you said is exactly right. It is those three issues. Um, I'm starting to worry that he's panicking and talking to the wrong people because he's sounding a little bit more like the candidates he defeated with, with the talking points about you know, softening on deporting deporting the ones who are, oh, they've been here a long time and they're law-abiding. You know, that, 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 yes, that's true, but how about you just say, no, my policy is consistent. People who are here illegally have no right to be here. We will decide whether they stay or not in our national interest. Yeah, if they're good for the country, we might keep them, but this is going to be an America first immigration policy, trade policy, okay, and war policy. nationalism, and that's what I've always thought. Do you think he gets it? I see the monkey that typed Merry Christmas. He got nationalism. Does he see how it all fits together? Because I, I don't know so. if he does. Because sometimes he wanders all over the place. No, I think what it's look. He's not a politician. Um, people always say they don't want a politician to run. But when he gives these speeches, you've been have you been to one of his speeches? I watch them every night here. We get the, pieces of them. We try to go in to and out. To actually be there, they're even more. Fun. Uh, we can't. We can't just <laughs> let him entertain us here. So we try to go in for the meat and leave well, the. No, but they are very, very entertaining speeches, yeah. and a lot of people come just because they want to be entertained. He's hilariously funny. I mean, That's people are driving country. for five hours to come hear him. You start listening to him and you're laughing and then you start thinking, oh, I agree with that. But I every politician gets completely taken with who's in his crowds and thinks that's the country. They all make that mistake. But that isn't what I'm saying is... Um, that is his style. Right. You're, he's getting a little too distracted by that. But the speeches he's given since the convention, oh my gosh, the teleprompter speeches are unbelievable. They're fantastic. They're perfect. If he just keeps doing that, that's how he can win. Well, the, will he stick to what's on the prompter? Will he stick to the message? He has been. He's really good at it. And actually, each I, prompt, well, he goes a little bit off, but not too much. But he doesn't start wandering off and start talking about something that, like I say, is, was fun. And well, Let's I take a look at this. For over a year now, Trump has insisted that illegal immigrants have got to go. According to the Texas Tribune today, Trump told Sean Hannity in a pre-taped town hall that he was open to softening in laws that deal with illegal immigrants. He said, quote, there certainly can be a softening because we're not looking to hurt people. It comes after an interview with Bill O'Reilly last night in which Trump said he would mimic President Obama's policies. Take a listen. We're going to obey the existing laws. Now, the existing laws are very strong. The existing laws, the first thing we're going to do 
if and when I win, is we're going to get rid of all of the bad ones. As far as everybody else, we're going to go through the process. What people don't know is that Obama got tremendous numbers of people out of the country. Bush, the same thing. Lots of people were brought out of the country with the existing laws. Well, I'm going to do the same thing. What's Trump saying to the American people right now about immigration? What did all that up to? How's it different than Obama? How is it different from all the candidates he just beat? I go through. That's one of the five well, talking he said points he's gonna, every he's gonna politician throw out that he's says. Gonna deport the, the felons. Well, it's very different from the actual policy, but they all say that, and it just sounds very consultant yeah. to me. This could be the shortest book tour ever if he's really softening his position on immigration, but I don't, I don't think he is. Um, Let me ask you a question about different. illegal immigration. Uh -huh. I think, you know, we don't do it anymore, but NBC News would always show those pictures from down in, uh, down in Texas or Arizona or somewhere on the border, the Canadian Mexican border, and they would show people, desperate people, racing across when the lights were off, and they would see them coming in, they'd see them running across the, the road to try to get a ride in a truck somewhere or something. How how do you stop that? That how do you stop that? Because what that is are men mostly racing across the border to try to get a job in the United States, which they know is going to be there somewhere. Somebody in, in Chicago in a restaurant or somewhere said, "I got right. a job for you if you can get up here." How do you stop the illegal hiring? Because he never mentions that. He, Trump never I mentions he, it. I, no, I wish he would. Um, and that isn't is, that the heart of it. That's what I wish you were talking about now. What, and plus, you know, H-1B visas, plus people losing their jobs, plus Kate Steinle again. I mean, why? There are only so many things you can talk about. Why are we talking? Talking about softening the lies of lawbreakers. I just, yeah. I think this is a mistake. It sounds like hard? it's coming from consultants. Has he lost his confidence? I don't think so. And but, but to answer your but last question, you're saying question, two things. You think he may have softened up here on what I got don't, him this no, far? No, I think this is a mistake. Um, I thought he's made other mistakes, and I've given him constructive criticism when I think he makes a mistake. I think this Does is a mistake. Um, but I want to ask, answer Does your he last take question. Take your criticism. Um, I haven't had a lot, but yeah. yeah. Um, no, he does listen to people. Um, and I'm not advising him or anything, but um, I did write this magnificent book. But to answer your last question. You still trust him. This isn't the same. Him. Yes, this is not the same as either Hillary or um, Obama. To compare it to what they are doing is preposterous. I don't know why he just said that. It's crazy. They are fighting the deportations of rapists. They're fighting the deportations yeah. of murderers. Hillary says she's going to open the border. She's going to amesty everyone. And she's going to sanctuary quadruple too. the number of, yeah. of Muslim um, refugees. To, so to say there's no difference, I think is crazy. I just don't understand why he's going to these really tired talking points that both yeah. Democrat and Republican politicians use. No, that isn't what's I going to I know why. I would guess why. I, mean, I, I think he's panicking. He looked into the, the abyss about a week or two ago. That's right. I he think dumped he's his people and he got nervous. He said, I better try something different. Along comes Kellyanne Conway, who's a traditional pollster. Well, I don't know who's giving him the advice, but this is definitely consultant-led advice, and it's not good advice. Um, what he should keep doing is what he's been doing. You're right. His three issues are obviously very appealing. I think they work appealing. for his audience. I don't know if it works it's for the whole his, country. Of course it does, and it works for no. blacks and Hispanics. Okay. They well, want jobs, too. Well, as a previous guest just said, uh, he should be going out talking about trade. Richard Fowler yeah. said talk about big cities with his a lot of poor people. His issues are incredibly because popular, and no other cities, politician There were put. jobs. Yeah. And they Muslims, the insults to women, given all that he said and all the people he's offended over the course of this campaign, to not to mention demanding to see the president of the United States birth certificate being in birther, why is Randall Pinkett not exactly right? You know, I, I know these guys, some of them are really good friends, and like any family, you're going to have people who have differences. In my own family, I have Hillary supporters, I have Bernie Sanders supporters, and this is the same case with the Apprentice family. Clearly, these six uh, supporters of Hillary Rodham Clinton have different opinions about whether or not Donald Trump should be the Republican nominee, and they're entitled to that. This is the beauty of democracy, that you get to all come to the table with their own differing views. Um, but I stand with Donald Trump because because I know that he has an incredible vision for this country and he will in indeed make America great, not just for this group or that group, but for everyone. Well, Omar, I mean, and I, and I get it, and I, you are a campaign surrogate, and I understand that you're supporting him, but this isn't just like a casual disagreement. Um, look at Donald Trump's unfavorable ratings. Uh, they're not that much better than Ted Cruz, but he has a 67% unfavorable rating in the country. This isn't just a few people who mildly disagree. There are people who are using the term fascism. That was used by Kwame Jackson in, know, I, his, pre I, in, in his press conference. This is not just a casual disagreement. 
God bless Kwame Jackson, but it was really hard to watch him on the news. I mean, you talk about somebody holding a grudge for 13 years it, it because he wasn't grudge. selected the to be Omarosa the apprentice. Not... One of the things that I'd like to say is it's important to understand, like I said, if they want to support Hillary Rodham Clinton, that's fine. They're entitled to that. And it's obvious that because they are on the Democratic side, it's, it's very convenient that their timing, here we are in April, you know, Donald announced last year in June, if they were really concerned, if they were really, really concerned about Donald Trump becoming the nominee. Why wait for now? Why wait until April when he's on the cusp of becoming the Republican nominee? If they were really genuine about their concern, we're in April. Well, you know, but and first they're of just all, coming I out. Think so you have to question why waiting. If they were so incredibly passionate about stopping right. Trump, right. they waited a long time, and it's very convenient their timing uh, I will ask uh, to one generate of them. I will publicity. ask one of them in a minute, but just give me one second for the limited amount of time. Because uh, the idea, first of all, on the timing, I will certainly ask one of your former colleagues about Please that ask issue. Them, however, it's April. however it's April. I want to get with you to the substance of their concerns. You have Donald Trump not exactly eschewing an endorsement from white supremacists, from David Duke, who was a former Klan leader. You have attacks on immigrants, attacks on Mexican Americans. I need you to address the substance of that as a woman of color. And by the way, you used to work at the Clinton administration, so I don't think that I the did. Clinton piece I mean, there's matters. No, there's no as question that I worked color, in the White House, and I have an color, understanding of politics. And one of the color, things that I know about one politics, more time. No, you, as you're a throwing a lot, color, so I need do to you answer have one of your questions. About that? You, you, you just threw a, a whole lot of stuff. So let me just at least answer one of the five questions that you just asked me. And the first question you asked is about...